الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يهدي فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وهو لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أيها الأخوة أيها الأخوات أحييكم بتحية الإسلام تحية من عند الله مباركة طيبة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation here. As I was talking to the uh, sisters and to the brothers this afternoon about what is done by ITNA and what other projects we are talking with, uh, the brothers is, is just really impressive and, and I think it's uh, It's, uh, it's really the, 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 the work that should be done in, in the United States and, and everywhere in the West. But uh, the today's discussion is really about uh, our identity and, and some of the, the challenges that we uh, are facing in, in our uh, world today and, and in which way we have to try to tackle them. So we're discovering the Muslim identity and trying to come back to the essential of our Islamic teachings and the essence of our religion is quite important. So I don't have much time because uh, I need to leave straight after the talk. And because I don't have much time and because it disturbs me, I will try and I'm asking you not to clap at all for many reasons and always the same, when you are emotionally driven and you clap, your attention and your awareness is less uh, present than if you just listen. So as much as you like having good talks, I need an, uh, an attentive audience. So just for us, 30 minutes, just trying to listen, to share views you may be uh, agreeing or not with what is said, but try just to be concentrated and, and, and try to share uh, and try to think about a few, some of the things that are said. Look, when it comes to identity, there, there is a problem. And we have to be very cautious in the way we tackle the notion of identity and as Muslims. Uh, it's something which was said, and you said that just right now, and I think uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Alain Dean said many things that are so important in the way we have to to think about this this mentality, the mindset, and this being on the defensive. When you come to this obsession that we have today about identity, it could come from outside. The people are asking you about your identity, and because you know that this question is going to come, you are quite naturally on the defense of this is, this is me. So it's not you who are deciding who you are, but you are defining who you are because you know that people are expecting something from you. So either you want to show this is me and you are assertive against, or you want to please and say, oh no, I'm a moderate, I'm, I'm nice, I'm a kind Muslim. And I think that in both situations, when you are aggressive or when you are in the defensive, it's not you. You are the object of what the people are thinking of you. Because you think that, oh, I want to show you who I am. So yeah, you are aggressive. But they are deciding for you who they want you to be. This is why it's quite important here to have a deep understanding of what Islam is all about and what are the Islamic teachings because you have to define yourself for yourself from within in the name of the principles of Islam. And this is why it has to be done in a very peaceful way with spirituality and in depth and coming back to the principles of Islam. In fact, there is no way to find your identity if you go far from it than we because the oneness of God and this understanding of la ilaha is the very essence of the Muslim energy. 
it's starting from there. And it's always an open identity. We don't have a closed identity. We are open in the center. We are not closed at the periphery. We have a center. We know where we stand, but we are open. From where we are, we can take everything which is good, because it has to all the tools. That wisdom is the last property of the Muslim. And he is the first to take it, or she is the first to take it, wherever she or he finds it. That were already having the knowledge of that. So this is something which is really important for us, is the way we talk about it. So you know, the way you talk about something is as important as, as, as what you are saying about it. The way you approach it. And very often, we can say good things, but the way we are saying it, or saying that, is wrong. There is a psychological weakness in the way we speak about the same thing. So this is why as Muslims, the only way to go beyond this psychological defeat or on the defensive is strong spiritual understanding. And I speak about spiritual understanding because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this, But there are some people that have hearts, but they don't understand. The deep understanding is their heart. Because our hearts are understanding. And this is the very meaningful of the beginning, the proofs of the Quran is exactly this. Is think with your heart, and with your heart direct your mind. So this is the very essence of what we are talking about. And especially in the consumerist society. Especially when you are listening to what we are listening to, okay, we are, as if you know, we are facing very difficult times, and, and that's not true. That's, I completely agree with my neighbor this morning. Oh, just now. This morning for me, I'm just jet lag is everywhere. Right now. So I think that this is important to come to this uh, understanding from within and to understand the, the, the essence of uh, our identity and also not to come with a narrow definition. Because a narrow definition of identity is isolating us, while Islam is not about isolation. We're not here. How could you say, Udo Binasadidira? How are you going to do that? Udo Binasadidira. Call for the, call to the, 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 the way of Allah. Bil with your wisdom. Wal mawa'adat al hasan. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّذِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ How are you going to do this? It's to call, it's just to be the witness. How are you going to be the witness to your message before people? How are you going to show this out of your wisdom? With the way you speak, with the way you talk, and even the, not only the substance of what you say. الْمَوْعَدَةِ الْحَسَنَ is the substance. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّذِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ is the best way. You have to choose your words. How are you going to do this? You translate yourself from the surrounding society. There is a contradiction in terms. You can't just deliver what you have to do as a Muslim if you just isolate yourself. So a narrow identity is just isolation. While we have to stay who we are, what we want to be, still connecting ourselves to the surrounding society. And this is the most difficult thing. To remain who you are, isolated, that's easy. You are right, you are wrong, and that's it. I don't care. But you're not here not to care about the people, because the best among you is the best for the people, and not by only giving money. It's to spread the right ethical teachings. We are here to be, our distinction is not only the way we dress, it's an ethical distinction. It's the way we behave. So there is something here which is the essence of Islam, is to be ourselves and to be open, to interact, to be proactive, to give and to take. And to take it's important. To take it's important. Remember Musa alayhi salam when he is in front of the people and say, the magicians, he say, are you going to, to throw first or we are going to throw first? I want to listen. I want to see what you have to deliver. And then I will respond. Why? Because I only can respond the right way if I know what you are going to say. Communication first is not I speak and you listen. I listen because I have something to tell you. Because I know that I have a mission, I know that I have something to tell you, I need first to know who you are, because to know how I'm going to say So this is what we have to take from the surrounding society, to listen to what is coming from the United States of America, Europe, 
uh, fellow citizens and your society need to know, as you said, Sheriff, it's exactly this, the context. Why is it so important to know about the context? And it's not only to speak the language. To speak the language is not. It's the starting point. It's the culture. It's, it's the dynamics. It's the power relationship. It's the memory. It's the collective psychology. It's all this together. So it's not easy. And this is why what you said is important. Things are coming with time. We cannot go faster than, than history. Sometimes we need one, two, three, four generations to understand. And sometimes we also have to rely on not only, you know, the immigrants that are coming, but the converse, the native, the indigenous Americans. We can tell you about this society. Listen, be humble in the way they are. They are maybe new Muslims, but they are older Americans. And you have to listen to all the people who have something to tell you. This is why sometimes the immigrants should sit sometimes and just listen to what the African American Muslims have to tell you. Because they know what is happening in this country. And just before, you know, the first election of Bush in this country, I was, when I was able to come, I was in the region here, and I met with African American Muslims, and these immigrants, they don't understand nothing, they don't understand anything about this, the politics in this country. They are just obsessed with Palestine and the international scene. They don't understand the domestic politics. And I was listening to this and say, that's quite true, that we have to be. You know, we have to know within what is happening and also outside. It's, there, there, is, there are connections. We have to listen to the people who understand what is happening. So this is something which is important in everything that we have to, to say about not coming with a narrow definition, not to be reactive, and try to be assertive in a peaceful way, with a, in a consistent way, in a confident way. So, if I have to start with this, quite briefly, is yes, I have to start with the principles of the Muslim identity that you can find wherever you are. Not distorted or shaped by the surrounding culture. There is something which is really important in our identity that is part of the same. Is that to be a Muslim has to do with faith and practice. Practice is up to you. Once again, be careful. It's not for you to put the people within or outside Islam. If someone is telling you, I believe in Allah, la ilaha illallah, but I'm not practicing, I'm not putting the people outside Islam because they are not practicing. You have no right to say to someone, you are not a Muslim, if she or he is saying, I am a Muslim, and I believe. You have no right to say anything about, you are in or you are out. It's, you are not the judge. You listen to the people, he says that he is a Muslim, he may be not a practicing Muslim, anything could happen. Tomorrow he might be better Muslim than you today. This is what you are asking Allah. Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala deen. We are asking Allah subhanahu every day to keep us within the right path. It's not for us to be the judge today because we don't know what is going to happen tonight. So this is something which is the, the, the starting point is faith and practicing and trying to, to, to abide by the five the five pillars, the six pillars of faith and the five pillars of our practice. But first is this faith, is is the center, is that what we are saying is that in the in the Allah. And it's part of our identity because it shapes the awareness, the conscience. It gives sense, meaning to our life. And this is something which is essential and we have to start with this. So anywhere we are, because we are saying La ilaha illallah all our life, it's about faithfulness to this. And faithfulness to this is exactly what you said. It's always a struggle. No faithfulness without jihad. Impossible. I have to be I'm not going to be get like that. It's far from anything. Life is a test. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَرْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا That life is a test. These are tests to know who is going to act the best way. So this is something we should just ask for. Our identity is about peacefulness and resistance. And resistance to reform is rahimness. What you have in that is to resist in order to reform. This is the two-way process of jihad. There is no sharia. No way towards faithfulness without jihad. This is life. So anyone who is coming to you, telling you, you have to remove jihad from your vocabulary, it means that you have to remove the heart of Islam from Islam. 
because spirituality is all about the jihad and nafs. So the, the, the starting point is this faith, which is important. And you add to this the second pillar. There is no Islam without education. Because we have to educate ourselves. Ourselves. Always. It's all about education. And even when Allah SWT is talking about himself, saying, Ar-Rahman, Allah the Prophet has to say, like this surah. This was Aruz al Quran. Ar-Rahman. Allah al Quran. خلق الإنسان علمه البيان. Straight after Al Rahman, the first thing is he taught the Quran It's about teaching, learning, and education. Why? خلق الإنسان. إنسان إنسان. The 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 human dimension of our being is through this relationship that we have with Allah Taala. To us is to educate ourselves to what He is teaching us. This is the way also we have to deliver to the people the way we have we are going to speak. It's all about this. So to be a Muslim, it's this faith and then this ongoing process of education. Whatever we are, it's part of our, our identity. And this is why when we are in a society, any society, when we have these problems of education, where it's, you know, we have illiteracy, this is against the very essence of Islam. A society which is promoting illiteracy is against the very essence of being a human being before Allah Ta'ala. This is the basic human right. Because this is the only way to be a believer to this educational process. And that is also to transmit. It's also to give this, to transmit this. We have this responsibility is to have faith and to transmit this faith to our uh, kids, to our surrounding society. So it's also part of our, our identity. And the last dimension, which is the fourth pillar of this uh, identity, is to act, is to implement. It's part of us. At the end of the day, this is what we have to do. Whatever you are, here in uh, California or in the Muslim majority countries at the end of the day and then in the end and why I so happy spot it has to shift everything in my life I have to believe I have to be a witness I have to be a witness الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ It means that you have to be this, you know, the best example to your behavior so for us, when we come with this we understand, okay, I live in this country now, I am at home. And now we have to start talking about integration, that, or, or even now you are at home in this country. Because now Islam is an American religion, you have just to put it in your mind now, you have to put it in your heart, and you want the best for this society. And remember that politicians and some who are talking about what is going on in Europe, they keep on talking about integration because they have something in mind. They don't want us to feel part of the society. So the best way for them to, to play on the psychological dimension is to use a word which is loaded by something which is you are outside. This is the whole country. No, I'm sorry, I'm at home. Once I was driving and someone, a racist, just, was just coming with his car and said, go back home. I said, I'm at home. This is home. With a smile, always like this. They want to be aggressive, you understand the very meaning of what is that heart of the Mujahid, you want to They're not here to spread around, you know, you know, aggressivity. No, this is with, in a very peaceful way, we are at home. So the point here for us is really this, it's part of our identity. Is also a psychological dimension. So there are principles and there, there is a psychological dimension, that there are words that we are not going to use. Don't ask an African American, you have to be to it, you have to be <laughs> Exactly like in the Mufti of Sarajevo would say, okay, I'm a European, you're not asking me to interpret to what? We have been here much before you. <laughs> so you may have to integrate us in your mind. The problem is your mind is not asking you part of this society. This is, by the way, what the, the, the President Barack Obama was saying from Egypt. And I agree, it would have been better to, to say from here, because I have some problems with Egypt. But the point is... <laughs> <laughs> the, point, the point is that he was saying 
are sending a message to the state saying, is that an American religion? And the Muslims are American Muslims, they are contributing. And these have to be understood by your fellow citizens. So it takes time, and once again, time is part of the solution. But we have to be committed, we have to do the work. And it's working much better at the local level than with all this national controversy that we may have. You know, all this discussion about radicalization, terrorism, war of terror, what we have on minarets in Switzerland, four minarets, and it's a national controversy. It's the Burkha, it's the Nihab. Just all this is used by populist party works, by the way the media are nurturing this. But we have to work at, we, we are not working for the next election. We are working for the next generation. Let the people work for elections, we have something, we have a vision. Of course we are going through something which is a crisis. We, 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 we should acknowledge the fact that it's difficult for women. So what you were talking about with visions, it's difficult, trends, racism among ourselves, and different trends, all this is part of our reality. But we have to be patient and persevere. And in Allah not so that he does it a lot is with the patient. He's with the perseverance and endure. The people who are acting and knowing that mean time in action, not to be passive. So this is to be subject of our own history here. And let me just Okay. Uh, so this is something which is important. Let me say something about all this. So when we have this understanding, what is going to be our best contribution? You know, I'm sometimes worried. I, I worry about what I see coming from the community, and I'm always repeating this. Is that now there is a psychological pressure. And this psychological pressure that we are facing is pushing some of the Muslims saying, you know what, we just have to speak about spirituality. Islam is nice. It's all about praying. It's all about fasting. And that's it. And on the other side, we have people who say, no, we have to struggle. This is, you know, it has to do with politics. It has to do. Look, if we have something to give to this society, it's not to say it's this or that, but to be able to show its goal. That when we are active, we don't forget the meaning. And when we are in the meeting, we don't forget to be active. That we are able to pray during the night and to act during the day. That we are able to say, Ya Allah, during the night, wa sallu wa nafni yam, pray while people are sleeping. This is what the Prophet said, arriving in Medina. But at the same time, we are not going to let it down the way you want it to be. We are not going to be accepted, we are not going to accept to be discriminated. We are not going to, to let these injustices, we are not going to see people being discriminated. We want this society to be better. Why? Because it's not a nap during the night, mean it's not a mushtama during the day. So I'm, I'm reforming myself during the night to be a better, to be at peace with myself, because I want peace in this society. And there will be no peace without justice. No peace without dignity. No peace without reforming this society. Yes, the United States of America is a society which is better, and it's not difficult to be better than the Muslim majority countries or some of the Muslim majority countries. You know, and it was said, yes, it's even easier to be a good Muslim in here than to be a good Muslim being able even to speak. There are six Muslim majority countries where I cannot go, I cannot speak there, because there is no freedom. There is no freedom. It's as simple as that. And even for six years, I was unable to come here. At the end, by struggling, you get your rights. So this is it. I can struggle in some countries. You have to wait for the dictator to pass away. <laughs> yes, and you don't know, maybe his son is coming. Oh. <laughs> this is democracy. The democracy can be elected for life. This is it. So we know that it may be easier here. So we have to think, you know, when we, we have some rights, we have responsibilities and we have to struggle. And it, things can move and change. Never lose your hope because this is la hawla wa la that means exactly this. I do whatever I can do, but beyond this, he can do the job. He, he, he will be with us if we are doing the right thing. So here, 
just one thing that I wanted to tell you, just it's really what we can give to this society is good meanings, objectives, role, spirituality in action. Come with this meaning that we are not just helping for the sake of helping, that we are not setting down and giving, getting our money, our salary, and that's it. No, we are here with a vision that we have to serve the society for a better. And we are not scared. Speak the truth. Say what you have to say. At the end of the day, the dignity of the United States of America is coming from the people who dare to speak to the government saying you are wrong when the government was wrong. Not the people who are just so shy and so scared that they just want to be to please the people or to please the government. You are not here to please the government. You are here to correct the government. Just to remember, to remind them that things should be done, and that you had a, you know, the blood of an Afghani man, a Pakistani man, a Iraqi man, a Palestinian man and woman is as valuable as the blood of an Afghani. This is what we have to, to say to all the people. There is no different difference between blood, the dignity, but not Karam and any head and me. The dignity of the human being is the same for all of the people, all of them. And we are here to speak about justice, and we are here to speak about dignity. And we are not going to be shy about it. So here there is something which is a very important point. It's all this. It's to do what? Remember, in the Quran you have a verse that I'm quoting a lot, but it's so important. Why are we following the progress? Why are we not always coming back to this verse saying, what about Canada or we also remain this so the point is that he is the best example, that you are following the best example. Why? Why are we following the best example? You have it in a verse which is quite important. Allah is saying to is saying to the Prophet as that see. If you want, if you love God, follow me. You follow Him in order to be to love because you want to show that you are loving Allah. It's a question of love. You have been Allah. Allah is going to love you because you follow. So all what we are trying to do, following the footsteps of the Prophet it's a question of to love Allah and to unite. So we are following and trying to put principles into action, to have this meaning in every single thing that we are doing. Why? In order to keep this relationship with us. It's a question, it's a question of loving him. This is what we are trying to do. We are not just coming here with, you know, this is, but when you understand this verse, you understand why Muslims cannot be for the list. Halal haram, and that's it. No, halal haram for what? What, are you, what is your intention? Ask your heart. In the amal bin niyad, this is exactly it. Why are you saying yes? Why are you saying no? Why are you speaking that way? Why are you acting that way or behaving that way? Why? Is this his presence in your heart? Is the very meaning of this verse that you were just quoting? So respond to the call of Allah Ta'ala and His Messenger and remember, know that the knowledge of Allah is between you and your heart. It's the man and the woman and it's one, your relationship with your heart. This is why you have got the knowledge of Allah so it's a, this is the very understanding of Islam. So when we speak about identity, let us come to these essential teachings that every one of us should come back to himself or herself and try to say, okay, what is my relationship? Is it a question of love? Am I trying my intention is to please him? Live on love, that is what is satisfaction. This is what I'm trying to get. And then I'm following the God of Islam with this in mind, with this intention. This is my identity. In fact, it is a spiritual identity first nurtured, shaped by this love. A spiritual identity with principles. This is what is the transcendence. My relationship with Allah Ta'ala is very close. I'm close. I respond to the call of the one who is calling, or when he is calling, or she is calling. This is a question, it's a dialogue. 
And our dialogue is not with the way we speak. It's when we are silent and when we are active. To act is to speak. When you act, when you behave, you talk to Allah subhanahu It's the way we talk. It's not only by coming when you have problems and say, Allah help me. When you don't have problems and you act, you speak to them. So you have to show your love out of your behavior. So this is part of my identity. This is what I have to be in this society. In the middle of a consumerist society, this is where I'm shaping this identity. This is the way I'm becoming light among people. And then, and this will be uh, the conclusion, unfortunately I have many other things to say, but this is where we come with this understanding and this is our heart understanding. The deep understanding of our heart and nurturing our minds. And this is this relationship between our mind and our heart, this ongoing discussion. It's a morata is this, my friend. The morata is exactly this. It's to monitor with your mind what is in your heart and to understand with your heart the way you think with your mind. It's a dialogue. And this is what you have. And this is part of my identity. This is the way it works based on it. But now we are living in a context. In the West, when we are saying in Hikmatullah to the Muslim, when we are talking that way, there is something which is you live in a society in the United States of America, not everything is good, not everything is bad. You have to be selective. Selective means you have to think, you have to study. What you said is so important, you know where things are coming. It's not everything which is not coming from an Arab country is bad. So you have some of our brothers who have a very narrow understanding of Beda. You don't understand that the two first fields when we speak about Beda is the Aqina and the Ibadat, Aqina and Masameh, and Beda, the things that are coming, innovation comes out, some of them are good. What you are saying about, you know, fatherhood. And by the way, fatherhood is so important in Islam, but it's a very important crisis. The Muslim communities around the world are dealing with a deep problem in fatherhood. We always speak about women because this is the pressure. But many of us, as fathers, are not doing the job. We have a problem of authority, we have a problem of presence, we have a problem of going alone. One of the most problem in one of our, our most important problems in this time is really the role of men. Even with women, because some are coming back to fatwa and Islamic with principles, when they have problems with women, they are the first to say, this is, this is in Rijal Awwaluna Alamisa, you have to listen. And this is a problem of men. So here, when you are saying this, it's quite important to understand it's coming from deep, it's coming from very far in this society, and we can take it, because it, it helps us to remind, but to remember the very deep teachings of Islam. So we can take this. But there are things that we have to be very critical. So this is why, for example, why do you think that you are here? Just because it's an exile? You don't think that there is a plan? I mean, the plan is not to convert the more, you know, to convert the people. This is not our business. This is between Allah and every single heart. We are not here to count. We are just here to be the best Muslims possible. Now, between the people and, and their heart, Allah Allah. But why are we here? If you are already a Muslim, why are you in the United States of America? Why some people are going to, to study there and are coming back? Why? Because here we have to study what is happening in this society. And we have to take and also to learn, but also to be critical. Our loyalty to the United States of America is always a critical loyalty. When it's good, we are here. When it's bad, we resist. But not only this, it's this in the intellectual ground. We listen, ideas, philosophies, we think, we, we, we should be at every one of these or her level to do this. We are dealing with a very long struggle when it comes to racism and civil rights in this society. Study this! Don't come with, I'm a good Muslim, everything is going to be fine. It's a question of power. You are dealing with power, with power struggle. You have to listen, you have to study this. It was the same with the Prophet Islam. Do you think that the Prophet Islam in Medina was not dealing with power? He was very smart. He was a politician. He was guided by the Prophet and he was listening, understanding what is happening. And we are here in the United States of America as if everything is new. No, we have come back to these deep roots of struggle. African American can 
Just help us to do the job here and understand what is happening. And then also, yes, I have. So this is something which is important. Critical words it's important and critical understanding to start. When I you know I was born and raised in, 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 in Europe, and you were born and raised some of you in, in the United States, and I learned a lot from history, from philosophy, from ideas, from those. It doesn't mean that because you are studying this, you forget about that. Do if you get you have time to do it. Both at the same time. It's possible to have these to understand the principles and the meaning that you must have and the dynamics. What is going on? This is the environment. A critical loyalty and a critical understanding. This is to be a Muslim. This is to follow the Prophet. This is to love Allah and I want to understand how it works. I shouldn't be naive. You know, the problem that we have, I saw so many sincere sisters and brothers. I don't have a problem with their sincerity, I have a problem with their naivety. And you know, sometimes the very dangerous brothers and sisters are the most sincere and very naive. Because it can be used by someone who is less sincere and not naive at all. It can be used by them. Exactly what happened in Afghanistan. People very sincere with the media, but behind them, the people who were using, instrumentalizing them, they were not sincere and very strong. You have to be careful here. That you are dealing with people, they know you. Do you think that the, the people around you, they don't know you? you know, for example, sometimes I'm, at, I'm, I'm in the UK, after all these centuries of colonization, I, I'm dealing with some uh, fellow Muslim citizens in the UK, it's as if they are talking to people they don't know. They know, they study much more even than you. They know how it works. So, of course, there is a great deal of ignorance, but you have some people, they know exactly what they want. So this struggle, on you know, this war against Islam, sometimes this perception could be ignorance, and sometimes very, very smart people, they know exactly where and how to use you. Or you need to use your own sincerity if you are not. And when sometimes say, you know, I don't care about politics. No politics for me. Say, you know what, no politics is politics. <laughs> if someone knows how to be with you, no politics. And this, is, this could be exactly the point where we should be very careful with is this. So let me really I come to my conclusion here by saying this. So all this is really our critical understanding and critical loyalty and to, to know in the surrounding society much more to be dealing with our principles as much as I said the fundamentals are important but also to learn our history, uh, politics, philosophy, to understand the power struggle uh, in this society and then there are fields where we have to deliver. As I said, there is the first field, which is the intellectual field. You know, now we have to come with, you know, when you are the subject of your history, you decide to use some terms and concepts and you need the definition. You are not using the terms that are imposed to you with the definition. Some of us are using Arabic terms and Islamic concepts with definitions that are not given by Muslims. They are coming from Orientalists. So if, if we are serious about being Muslims in the States, in the West, we have to come with the right terminology and say, no, I'm sorry, this definition is wrong. This is the way I'm talking. This is what we have to understand. We have to come with, you know, a philosophy, a list of concepts that we are giving, and also to be able to say there are many definitions among Muslims. Even the, the concept of Sharia, we don't agree on the very definition among even the scholars. So I think that here this is important. And with this, when we come with this intellectual input, never to accept to be put in, as I said, and I'm repeating this, when it comes to terminology and values, we are not a minority. Stop talking as if all we are, I am, I am in the ground. I'm debating with you. We are discussing. And now we are, it's an, an equal and an equal good. And very often when it comes to values, we don't understand. But why I'm saying here, I can say it everywhere. I'm not talking as a Muslim problem of the people. If you give the, 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 the if you use the concept, if you give the definition, you can talk that you are and your values are going to be also understood as majority values. So this is something which is here uh, important and it helps us to come with a kind of assertive uh, uh, way of dealing with the surrounding society. The second thing which is uh, also another feeling is about uh, our values and to be 
critical and self critical. It's a way to be humble. We sometimes, sometimes we are so scared that we are on the defensive, and sometimes we lack humility. Because we have always had this day, it's great. But we lack this gap to speak about this gap between our values and what we are doing. To be self-critical is giving us a sense of humility. We need this sense of humility. To be able to say the values that we are talking about, justice, dignity, equality, freedom, these are values that are shared by all people. But the way we are implementing them today in most majority countries or in, most, in our communities, there is a gap and we have to, to come with this. If we want to reform ourselves, not let us be critical, but not in a defensive way or as, you know, helping us that we can't, you know, we can't do something. It's to be assertive and say we have to reform this. And what you were saying about the divisions within the community, this is the reality that there is a lack of intra-community dialogue. Of course there is a lack of interest, but let us be critical, but in a constructive way. A constructive, critical approach is important here uh, also. The other thing which was said, and this is why I'm supporting what was said here, is really anything which has to do with uh, working for the good people and the needy people, what is done for the homeless and all this. And once again, as Muslims, as American Muslims, we are not only helping the Muslims, it should be everywhere. And this is our contribution. This is normal, this is what we have to do. As a medical doctor who is helping anyone who is coming, as Muslims, we are here for the best and the better for this society. So the solidarity thing, it's important in our discussion. Uh, and also, please, if you want to normalize, you know what I'm always saying? We have to normalize our presence without trivializing it. Normalize our presence, we are everywhere. We speak about education, education is, is, we care about education. Not only by saying, we have a problem in education, we have our Islamic schools. Okay, we can have your Islamic schools, but the great majority of the Muslims are going to state school system. So we have to be involved as parents, as teachers, as citizens. All the discussions are our discussions. Environment, global environment, global warming, all this is us. So this is what I call the new we. We have to be involved in this discussion and we have to come with something which is normalizing our presence. But what is distinctive, what is not trivializing in our presence is we come with ethics, we come with meaning, we come with priority, we come with a vision. We try to come with, there is a meaning here. We are talking about dignity and this is something that we have to do. And let me end with two things which are, that are important. The, 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 the next thing is about politics. And, and once again, please, don't be naive as I said. We are dealing with power and we should be able to deal with that. We should be able to come with ethics in politics. We should be able to come with this. In any, in any, to be a black Muslim, a black Muslim or to be a black in the United States of America is not the same as to be someone coming from the white middle class in this country. You have to say it. You have to say this has to change. It's not because you have an African American president that the symbol is changing the reality. The reality remains the same. At the grassroots level, it's impossible to accept what is going on in the inner cities. In jail. I went and I saw what is it's just unbelievable that this hyperpower that the United States of America has something which is behind bars treating people like this. And it's not only in Guantanamo. You know, people are talking about Guantanamo is going to close. What is going on now in jails in Afghanistan? Done in the name of your country. You have to speak out. Don't be shy. And even, you know, I was banned from this country because I gave money to Palestinians. I will never stop supporting the Palestinians because their cause is a just cause. I'm not going to support, you know, anything which is killing innocent people. This is not us. We are supporting them. There is no plan to protect the Just think about it because it's serious. It's very serious. Don't be shy. Speak the truth. They, this government, we are not going to give up because it's a question of justice and dignity. We are going to lose our common dignity and you with us if you keep silent on that. So it's something which has to do with this power struggle within the society, the civil rights. 
the path to be improved in this society. Yes, the United States of America is better than many other countries, but still, many things should be changed in this society and we have to, to deal with it. And when I speak about races to be self critical means, as I'm always saying, we have to solve the problem within the community. Don't go to patronize, to lecture the people why within our community it's not easy to be an African American. It's not easy to be a Latin. It's not easy to be a convert. Some are waiting for the converts to change their culture. They want, they want them to be more Arabs, to be more Arabized, Pakistanized, or Turkishized, whatever. This is wrong. Racism is wrong with it. So let us also be able to say this. And there is one thing which is important and will be very important in the future. This is also part of our contribution. We live in a consumerist society where arts and entertainment are very important. You may decide now it's all haram. So please, it means that you are in another world. So if you see movies, music, it's all haram, that's fine. Come back with your kids in 10 years. But if now you are serious about this, ethics in arts and entertainment is one of the big challenges of the future. And as you live here, you have some skills here, you have to think about it. We have to be creative, we have to be faithful to the principles that create the new ways to express ourselves. And to have, and it has to do with professionals. Professionals, you know, entertainment and arts, they are very, very demanding areas. And we are absent, still too absent from that. So once again, what you are doing in this field is so important. But what my point is coming here, it's not only to come and to share with you in half an hour some views. At the end of the day, we come here and we speak the way we were speaking is for every one of us here to say, okay, it might be that I can take something from this talk for myself and to change and to reform. At the end of the day, you know, be careful. Even lectures could be fashion. Even lectures could have to be passive. Even lectures, every time you say, oh, I went to a talk, Nash, and tomorrow you're supposed to say, no. And it means that we are wasting our time. But they have to learn that. We know that, in fact, in this time, it's not a question of number. That my, maybe I came here, or you came here for one heart, for one mind. And this is the way for its gender, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.